Hello, Dr. Rosalind here. And I just had a wonderful conversation with Dr. Ellen and Rock Your Midlife. We talked about everything that's important with menopause women, talked about our sleep and hormone disruptors, getting in your water and uh, lifting those weights and things that are going to just help you sail with vibrancy in midlife. And hopefully you're going to listen and get those pearls and just help your health and wellness. Welcome to the Rock Your Midlife podcast, your transformative sanctuary designed to guide you through self-discovery and provide the tools you need to find your purpose and navigate life authentically. Whether you want to optimize your health, boost your happiness, or deepen your self-love, this podcast is your ultimate toolkit. Welcome to Rock Your Midlife. I'm Dr. Ellen, the Midlife Whisperer, and I am thrilled that you are here. You know, if your exercise is off track, if you don't have any energy, if you are dealing with menopause symptoms like brain fog and joint pain and things like frozen shoulder, this show is for you. If you've been trying your crazy supplements and doing lots of different things to feel better, you may be missing the one ingredient you need to rock your midlife and feel awesome, even if you are going through menopause. And it is movement. In this empowering episode of Rock Your Midlife, my guest is Dr. Rosalind Moore. She's the founder of Rekinetic Lifestyle Medicine, and she's a seasoned physical therapist and athletic trainer with over 24 years of experience. And she's going to help us navigate menopause symptoms like joint pain and frozen shoulder. And we'll even be talking about weight gain and insomnia. So you can just overall feel fantastic. Because I have to say, I've gone through the menopause roller coaster, come out the other side, and I feel really awesome. But, you know, I had a lot of ups and downs through all of that and really had to discover what works best for me. And for me, it's really been movement and more gentle movement, more stretching, more yoga, as well as strength training to keep my muscle mass up, a whole food plant-based diet with plenty of exercise. Stress reduction has been huge, making sure that I get great sleep, but exercise is really key. And I, before I bring Dr. Roz on, I wanted to talk a little bit about my relationship with exercise, because I think it's something that a lot of us at midlife really are experiencing. We kind of have this like hate relationship with exercise, we sort of reframed it as punishment. It's like this thing that we do because we've been bad. Maybe we've had a threesome with Ben and Jerry's and, you know, binged on Netflix. Personally, I'm a big Bridgerton fan, fan myself. And we're like, oh my God, I'm going to get up tomorrow. I'm going to go to the gym for an hour and do cardio. And I'm here to say, exercise is not a weight loss method. It's fantastic for weight maintenance. It's fantastic for your mental health. It's fantastic for your cardiovascular health, your bones, your muscles, your joints, all of the things, but no, your body will actually adjust. So I think it's really crazy that we've gotten this cockamamie idea that exercise is a weight loss method. If you are looking to lose weight, my recommendation is don't focus on weight. I know that might sound counterproductive, but make weight an outcome. Focus on what you have control over, which is lifestyle change, you know, movement so that you feel good, so that you build, you know, metabolism, high muscle mass. And, you know, and if you're struggling with your weight, I really recommend and, and your and your relationship with exercise, taking a listen to this show because hopefully it's gonna help you make a 180. I know my relationship with exercise has been all over the map. As a kid, I was a dancer. I started dancing when I was five and I just love movement. You put some music on, it's like, everybody dance now. I mean, that's like, I just, if you watch me on Instagram, you'll see, I love to move and I've gotten back to that place. But through all of that adolescence, I became a runner. I was a miler. I could do a 540 mile, which is pretty fast. Ooh. But my God, I developed this um, antagonistic relationship with my body. It wasn't like we were in partnership. It was like, how much can I beat my body up to get it to go faster and perform better? And so it, it's sort of like I became, you know, it, I lost that partnership with my body. And, you know, our bodies are amazing, like 32, 35 trillion cells all working together to keep you alive. And then you've got even more trillions of cells in your microbiome, which are like creating all kinds of chemicals and neurotransmitters that just help you run correctly. And we lose that relationship, I think, particularly because we emphasize weight so much. And we feel like my body doesn't look a certain way. If it's not young, if it's not skinny, and it doesn't, you know, if it's not a certain size and shape, then I don't like it. So I'm here to say, 
your love your body is, is amazing. And, you know, this is going to help you transform that relationship. So in my adolescence, I developed this antagonistic relationship with my body. And that really continued. When I was in college, we would all do these Jane Fonda. Everyone remember like the aerobics of Jane Fonda, like all of those uh, fire hydrants. And Rosalind is laughing, right? The fire hydrants. And then we would go to the, um, the cafeteria, right? And we would like all feel guilty about eating the frozen yogurt. We engaged in all of this fat talk. It was ridiculous. And then in my you know, my 30s and my 40s, there was pregnancy and gaining weight and having this, you know, again, sort of antagonistic relationship. And then something magical happened. I learned self-compassion. And my I learned because it was the topic of my dissertation, which was self-compassion, body image, and women. And my um, dissertation on my dissertation committee was uh, Kristen Neff, who is the pioneer in this whole area of self-compassion. She's like, Ellen, if you want me to publish research with you, you have to learn self-compassion. And what self-compassion did, it was like magic bullet. It's like, I would say exercise and self-compassion are like the things you need at midlife. You know, I um, learned to love myself and my body and what my research showed and what I've discovered is learning self-compassion, which is essentially learning to treat yourself the way you would a good friend. So you're kind rather than judgmental. You understand common humanity, like most of us in a female body go through the menopause, which is no fun, but we're getting more information. So it's getting easier. And then noticing, being mindful when you notice your stress and suffering. But what my research showed is learning self-compassion, doing nothing around your body, reduce body shame, body dissatisfaction, self-worth based on appearance and improved body appreciation. And when that happens, when your body image gets better and you start feeling better about your body and yourself, you want to take care of your body. And then you start to see exercise as I do now is something that's enjoyable. I mean, truthfully, I move my body probably two hours a day, but it's not a punishment. It's not to lose weight. I just love it. You know, I'll walk the dog, I'll get on my bike, I'll go swimming, I'll do a bit of yoga, I'll do some strength training while I listen to watch the Bridgertons, or I actually really like um, all of those terrible dating shows, right? All those dating yeah. shows on Netflix, but it's my guilty pleasure. But I love to move my body, and I'm hoping that today's show is really going to empower you to love your body too and to move because it feels so good. I think it feels so good in your, whether you're in your forties, fifties, sixties beyond to like, be like, wow, I can lift my bag up when I get on the airplane. I don't have any aches and pains. I noticed myself, nothing hurts. Like my body does not hurt because I move in the right way and I eat the right diet and I deal with my stress and I get sleep. Those are the four things you got to do. If you want to make it through midlife. So without further ado, let me formally introduce my guest. She is Dr. Rosalind Moore. I think she likes to go by Doc, Dr. Rosalind. Yes. <laughs> um, and she's Dr. Rosalind on Instagram, and that's how Rosalind on Instagram, and that is how we met. And she is the founder of Rekinetic Lifestyle Medicine. She's a physical therapist and athletic trainer, and she's got over 24 years of experience. So you want to listen to my girl, Rosalind. She's amazing. She is a licensed doctor of physical therapy. She specializes in empowering women over 45 to improve their health and build strength and reduce joint pain through integrated evidence-based approaches. And she's dedicated to helping women navigate the challenges of midlife from managing menopause symptoms to avoiding medication and surgery, enable them to live active and fulfilling lives. Welcome to Rock Your Midlife, Dr. Rosalind. So good to have you here. All right. Amazing. Let weight loss be the outcome. I like that. I like that we said at the beginning. All right. I appreciate it. And I am so happy to be here. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you're here. And I love too that, you, you know, you've got this non-diet approach. That's another thing too. Like we were talking about weight loss is like watching paint dry and all of this emphasis on dieting. You know, certainly have the right diet, but all the advice we're giving you is like stuff to do for life. It's not a quick fix that gets you somewhere and then you go back to your regular lifestyle. It's a lifelong thing. So before we dig in, I'm super curious, how did you get into being a physical therapist? Like what inspired you to take this path? Yeah. So I started my career in physical education and exercise science originally. So I thought I was going to you know, teach PE, be an athletic trainer, working in high school, maybe move on to college. And then I decided to go into exercise science. So I thought I was going to do corporate fitness and, you know, work in a corporation and do fitness programming and teach fitness classes. Back in the 90s, that was a big thing where corporations were hiring corporate fitness managers and fitness directors. And that was a big thing then. 
And I worked at Kellogg's and the Kellogg Corporation and did that for a while. And then the bottom kind of dropped out because, you know, of course, for some reason, corporations decide that it doesn't matter anymore about your employee's health when the bottom line comes down and they decide that they need to save money. For some reason, they decide to cut health benefits first. So that kind of bottomed out and a lot of companies um, stopped having fitness programs and corporate fitness stuff. And um, that wasn't working for me. But at the time, I was already a certified athletic trainer. So I was able to work in clinics um, as an athletic trainer. And I was seeing patients as an athletic trainer. So I thought, well, you know, why don't I go into physical therapy, you know, since I'm already kind of doing that kind of work. And I also wanted to move from the state I was in. And because of the laws, with the state that I wanted to go to, I wasn't going to be able to do the same kind of work that I was doing as an athletic trainer in a clinic. So I felt like um, I, it would be best to go ahead and just go to physical therapy school. So wow. that's what landed me there. How old were you when you went back to school? I was in my thirties. Yeah. Early thirties. <laughs> it, it is never too late to make that kind of change. So, and, and what inspired you to start working in this area of midlife? Cause that's how we connected because of course, both of us are midlife influencers and, yeah. and there's such, it's such a really exciting space where women are getting answers and we're talking about menopause, but what inspired you to work with this population? So the first half of my career, I actually worked in pediatrics. So I worked in the school system, working with uh, kids that had disability disabilities that went to school. And that's it's still a big passion of mine. I still love children and I love working with children that have disabilities. And I also had um, a passion for sports medicine. So I did that for the first half of my career. But then towards the end, I'm like, okay, I need to stop working for other people. I want to do what I want to do. I want to see who I want to see. And I started really enjoying more um, work with like joints and like hips and knees and like new runners and hikers. And I'm a snowboarder also. So like oh, cool. I started thinking of like active women. And then as I started aging, I'm like, okay, here's this population like me that are active and want to keep being active as we get older and, you know, we don't have to just sit there and do like chair exercises in our 50s. You know, things have changed. Things have really changed. And we can do things. I didn't even start snowboarding until my mid 40s. And um, so then I decided uh, just like five years ago, I said, OK, I want to work as I want to work and what I want to do. And my passion is to work with women, active women. And I thought, OK, I'm hitting my 50s now. So this is what I want to do. And then I started having some of those menopause midlife issues myself with cholesterol, blood pressure, sleep issues. And so I said, you know, this is a problem. So yeah, that's what led me there. Oh, I love that. And I love that you're saying, you know, that, that we can change. So if you're listening and thinking it's too late and I hear this all the time, I have a lot of eye problems. So I'm up in a space with a lot of older people people that are older than me and they're walking in their, in their, their uh, wheelchairs or they're in their walkers and they're like, don't get old, don't get old. And I'm like, it's I'm alternative. 60, yeah, I'm 61 and I feel effing fabulous. And so the cool thing is that as long as you are breathing, there's a lot more going right than not. And you're thinking, oh my God, I haven't been to the gym or I don't know what to do. Just you can start. Like, how would what do you say to women? I'm sure you meet them who are just like they've never picked up a dumbbell, or maybe they like did it earlier. And I meet a lot of women who are like really in great shape, and then they had a bunch of kids. They stopped exercising completely, and there's a lot of like kind of shame and guilt because they've put on some pounds and they're out of shape. Where do you suggest women start? And also, do you have any suggestions for that sort of? God, I feel so kind of ashamed of how I've let myself go. Yeah, I think a lot of times, and you mentioned this, that a lot of times people, the first thing they think about is, um, you know, taking away. So I'm going to starve myself and then you're going to go crazy with cardio. And unfortunately, that's been like a thing from the 80s that for some reason still is going on. Thank you, Richard Simmons. Women. <laughs> I remember Richard Simmons. I know. Oh, I know Richard Simmons. So and bring Jane Fonda. Jack, bring and, back Jack LaLanne. Uh, Jack you know? LaLanne. Yeah. Jack he had LaLanne the little weights never... with the Nautilus. And yeah, he had the little Nautilus thing and he was showing weightlifting. Yeah. And he wasn't really, I don't think he talked a lot about weight loss. I should no, he was back. showing like the weights and the things yeah, and stuff. Just, he was like all about getting people up and moving. But yeah. Go, yeah. So yeah. there is, there's this thing of like, I have to there's go to the gym thing. for hours a day. Yeah. For hours a day. And for some reason it's still that thing. And, and I, I know I believe that too, at the beginning when I first start working out a lot, 
And so um, I think sometimes you have to think instead of taking away, let's think about adding. So um, let's add sleep is going to be your first thing, because if you're not sleeping well, your, you know, your hormones and everything get off and you're going to want to eat not as well. And you're not going to want to exercise or move or do things. So let's add more sleep. Let's add water. Let's add fruits and vegetables. Let's add gratitude. Let's add um, maybe some meditation and some stress reduction. So let's start there so that you can have some gains, some wins, something that you can actually attain so that you can have some something positive to start with, because those are some little things that you can start with that's that's a positive. And then you want to add maybe five minutes a day of, of movement. Um, unfortunately, people make a plan that, oh, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to go three days a week and I'm going to go for an hour, three days a week. And then Monday comes and they're tired from the weekend and they miss that Monday and then they're going to wait for the whole next week. Well, if they would have just decided to do that five minutes on Monday, then they could do the five minutes Tuesday. And then you just do that five minutes and then you can increase from there because now I your body too is yeah, habit. also if you do the five minutes, like if you're down there doing a push up, you're not going to, you say, I'm going to do a push up. You do 10 push ups. Yeah. If you yeah. do, you put your sneakers on, you're out, you start to enjoy yourself. And all of a sudden yeah. you've walked 15 minutes. But I think yeah. part of it, I always tell my clients to have it stack. So it's like if you, you know, park your car further away or if you, you know, get up and, you know, use the, the lavatory, then it's like, okay, then I'm going to like walk the stairs, find some way to connect things that you're already doing yeah. with some movement. I love that this idea of addition, right? We're always looking at subtraction. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned sleep because I know myself and my clients, God, if I don't sleep well. I yeah. just do not feel great. And yeah, I would say things great. that have, have that I, if you're struggling with sleep, make sure to get, go to bed, wake up the same time, get out your circadian rhythms on the right place, which super important. Get some light first thing in the morning, um, get a regular go to bed, wake up time, turn off your screen, your phone, your phone an hour an before hour. <laughs> yep. room is dark, cold yeah. and quiet. And another thing I've started to do, which I love is do if you're someone who stays up at night and worries, give yourself five or 10 minutes during the day to journal about worried. I am yes. worried about my kids and I yes. am worried about my mother's health and I'm mm -hmm. worried about my job and I'm worried about yep. my own health. It's amazing when you, when you do this, you worry dump, right? And then yes, when it's exactly. like two o'clock in the morning, you can't sleep. You're like, oh, I get to worry tomorrow between 2.15 and 2.30. That's my yeah, worry time. I can yeah. let that go. But sleep is, I yeah, love so that good. you're- Talking about this as, as additive, not subtractive. Yes, exactly, exactly. Because it's always just like, what can't I do? What can't I do? Well, what can you do, okay? So you can do those five minutes every day. Your brain starts to, to say to yourself, well, I'm an exerciser. Seven days a week, I'm an exerciser. And then, yeah, then you can increase from there. Just like you said, you know, you may decide to do more than that five minutes. And that's great. So now it's Wednesday and you decided to do, maybe you're doing your 30 minutes, and but you only have five minutes. So that's fine. So now you're not going to beat yourself up because you can't do that 30 minutes because you don't have to, you know, maybe you only have 10 minutes and that's fine. But sometimes people just decide, well, I don't have that hour, so I'm not going to do anything. And that just doesn't work. So you, you just got to do something and yeah, make sure it's something that you like. Absolutely. That, I love that you said that because I was going to say, make it fun. Like get on. I've had so many clients just like, get out your bike, yeah. take the old rusty thing out and then get on your bike, do some kayaking, some swimming, dancing is awesome. Yeah. Um, make it fun or, you know, or pair it with something, you know, go for a walk with your girlfriend instead of going out for cocktails yeah. or walk yeah. to get the cocktail. Walk to get the cocktail. Walk exactly. to get the cocktails and then walk yeah. back. It'll be really exactly. fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have a yeah. little vineyard and we biked to the vineyard and had a, did a little wine tasting and bike home, which was, which was interesting, but yeah, build it into your day. And the thing is, I don't know how much, how much time do you find it takes someone from going from not exercising till it starts to become enjoyable? Because I know there's this period where, okay, if you haven't exercised in a while, it's, it's not that comfortable. I mean, walking is, but like how, how long do you feel like it takes midlife women to get in shape? Like not in super shape, but like where it gets to be more easier to do. Yeah, I think if you are consistent with 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 like with the lifestyle changes, I mean, it could be as simple as 21 days that you're into a habit change, 21 days, 28 days, you know, a month or so that you're starting to make these changes that you can incorporate them in and, and start making a lifestyle change. But, you know, if you don't see that, you can't give it up. 
you give up in a month, you know, you know, give yourself three months, you know, you, it didn't take you one month, it didn't take you three months to backslide. So it may not take you a month or three months to, to get back to where you need to be. Yeah, great suggestions and get some accountability. So, you know, you can talk to me, you can talk to Roz, you can talk to a girlfriend, you can hire a trainer, but the accountability piece is huge. I find like, if you know that you're accountable, be accountable to, be accountable to your dog, right? I tell so many clients, get a puppy. If you've been thinking about like, I want to adopt a puppy, you will get out and walk if you have a dog, you know, get out there and throw the Frisbee. I've got a Border Collie, so she needs a lot of oh, exercise. Yeah. So we oh, walk, yeah. We this Border Collie swims. She's like the yeah. only Aww. swimming Border Collie on the planet. But um, it definitely, like, I love her. And I know that like her health is super important. So yeah. get some accountability. So let's talk about strategies to manage menopausal symptoms. So I think the main things people are having trouble with depression, mood swings, hot flashes, um, and joint pain, and even things like frozen shoulder. I mean, there's like so many symptoms of menopause. Talk to uh, the audience about how movement can help and what kind of specific movements can we do to really uh, help with some of these menopausal symptoms. Yeah. So some of that stuff is just like internal inflammation. So that's one of the first things you want to work on. So like your gut health. Um, so working on either if you finding that you might need to work on your nutrition, maybe with a professional and find out if there are some trigger foods that are creating inflammation and um, working on that and then cleaning up your nutrition, maybe on the gut health to decrease some of that, like Sugar, unfortunately, alcohol, um, those kind of things to processed decrease. Foods are, yeah, processed foods, yeah, exactly. Your, your body sees a processed food as an invader. So what it does is it creates antibodies. Your immune system goes, oh my God, that artificial flavor coloring uh, additive that I can't pronounce doesn't belong here. So that the inflammation is just your immune system's way of taking care of the invader. So really yeah. cutting back on that processed food and certainly sugar too, because then that creates all of these insulin spikes and that can create issues. And also, you know, more of that belly fat that I think a lot of women are trying mm -hmm. to yeah. get rid of. So yeah, get, get rid of the sugar and also all of the processed foods or most of them. The alcohol, can. unfortunately, just doesn't work for us in our, and, in our midlife and, and um, toxins. So, you know, you got to think about what are you putting on your face? What are you putting in your body? What are you cleaning your homes with? Because a lot of those things can be hormone disruptors. Yep. So those are something to think about. And, um, vinegar and baking soda guys, <laughs> does a lot of good, but... does a lot of good. Yeah, definitely. Vinegar works really well for a lot of different things. Um, and there's and, clean ingredients too. So yeah, you can buy clean yeah. for everything from your dishwashing detergent, laundry detergent. Yeah. Just, I just wrote an article on endocrine disruptors. So it's amazing how much stuff and buying more organic too. And buy you can more get organic. expensive organic yeah. at, uh, you know, cost pay now or pay later. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're helping people... the planet. Yeah, you're, you're, a lot of things that's going to be better for the planet, it's going to be better for you. And it may cost a little more at the beginning, but usually those things last longer, you know, like people balk at the price at the beginning, but it's really going to last longer. Like I know sometimes some of the products I buy is a beauty counter from the environmental working group. And, and, you know, when I have a lot of money, you know, I'll buy this stuff and it may cost me like a hundred or $200 for all the stuff that I use for my face, but I'm not buying it a couple times a year. I only buy it once a year you know, it's going to last me. So, you know, and it's so much worth it. It's going in my skin, <laughs> you know? So, so those are some of the things to think about, um, at first. Um, and then, so decreasing inflammation and then the movement part. Okay. Because you have to move in order to decrease the, the inflammation as well and in order to get the blood flow and in order for your joints to get the blood flow that they need to get the fluid that they need to decrease the joint stiffness um unfortunately an actual frozen shoulder is a whole other thing research really doesn't understand what frozen shoulder is and unfortunately a lot of women in menopause do get that and they're thinking it is hormonal because it is really it really happens a lot in women in menopause and um, so they're thinking it is kind of menopausal. It could be from a previous injury, um, but that's something that you definitely have to work with um, a provider on that if you have that. And that's either like, you know, physical therapy, like intensive physical therapy. And if that doesn't work, then um, you may have to get, you know, some type of an injection um, for that. And then along with the physical therapy, but just, you know, general joint pain. So once again, we're back to our sleep our water, 
and then what we were just talking about before. So decreasing inflammation and then your movement and then adding resistance training because the stronger your muscles are, the stronger your bones are going to be. So that is important. And especially as we get older, because you want to be more independent, you want to decrease injuries, you want to decrease your fall risk, and you want to decrease the additive effects if you do have a fall. Because there's a lot of research, in fact, that if women actually have a fall and break a bone, the death rate that can happen after that. So it's really Yeah, important. it's a huge uh, issue. I mean, it's definitely one yeah. of the leading causes of disability and even death when you have the, the broken hip. And certainly, you know, we and mm -hmm. you can check out some of my other shows on bone density. I've had a couple of experts on Dr. John Newstadt, and we talked about that. I think that was a couple of shows ago. So <clears throat> lots of information on on bone health and joint health. And I like, you know, strength training, I have so many, you know, clients who are grandmas. Like we want to pick up our grandkids, right? We want yeah. to, I mean, I just feel like my muscles are... I mean, I think they, you know, they look great too. It's like yeah. great to be strong. I feel strong. You yeah. want to be strong. I think that a lot of women are like, oh my God, I want bulk. What's wrong with bulk? Bulk just means muscle. And if you have muscle, then exactly. You can pick up your grandkids. You can pick up that luggage. You can, you don't have to call somebody anytime you just want to like move a piece of furniture or do something. You're going to be independent. Plus muscle is metabolically active. So if you are looking to increase your calorie exactly. burn, I mean, I think a lot of women, I, I, I wish I could do virtually um, like a body composition, use a body composition meter, because I think so many women, the fat mass goes up, the muscle mass goes down, the bone mass goes down and yeah. strength training can really, you know, help to change all of that. It doesn't have to be crazy. I don't go to the gym. I don't have a gym. I live in an Island half the year. Yeah. We don't have a gym here. And then I live in Costa Rica and I just have, you know, a couple of free weights. Your I've weights. got some, yeah, some by your desk bands. There, right? yeah. Yep. And I've got some, <laughs> you know, and I do body weight and I'm doing yoga. I think yoga is another really awesome thing to do because you're getting that range of motion, the movement, um, which I think is so important as we're aging, um, we need to like lubricate the joints mm -hmm. through a range of motion. And also I, we didn't talk much about balance, but balance is super important, right. you know, for those falls. And also it works the core. I was listening to um, a podcast yesterday about a podiatrist and she was talking about like foot health and how important, like thinking yeah. about your foot as part of the right. core exactly. and just, I don't know, just getting like treating your body. Like it's just, I don't know, like your favorite thing, yeah. right? And like making sure you've got a well-rounded routine. Yeah. The foot is so important. People have no idea. Like just your big toe, the mobility, the range of motion in just your big toe is so key in your balance. Um, so your big toe and your ankle. And a lot of times you see older people, how they're, you know, doing that shuffling gait because they're afraid of their balance. So keeping the mobility or the range of motion in your big toe and your ankle and then your knees is going to do wonders for keeping your balance. And then the other part of that is the strength. You know, a lot of people think they just need to work on like standing on one foot or whatever, which is true, but actually having the strength in your foot and the strength in your calf and everything is another part of, of having good balance. Yeah. So I would like to do is, you know, stand barefoot. So like while you're brushing your teeth, again, the habit stacking, yeah, stand yep. on one foot while you're brushing your teeth. Yep. Um, another thing I love to do is grounding. So when the weather is good, like it is now, take your shoes off and walk around barefoot because the earth has a magnetic charge to it. So it's really great for us. It's great for your feet to get out of the shoes and get grounding. And it's also really good for your body in terms of the, like sort of the, your own, we're, we're magnetic beings. Like the heart is both a pump and it's a battery. So it has magnetic charges. We have magnetic charges. And so being in touch with the earth is really powerful. Gardening is really good too. I think gardening is another great activity and yeah. there's some really cool research when you think about movement whether that's cleaning houses or doing gardening whatever it is if you think about it as sort of even weight loss it actually changes the way that your your body um changes it's been some really fascinating research where they took a group of maids and they told half of them that like hotel you know workers half of them that their cleaning was a form of like weight loss exercise you know i said weight exercise is not a weight loss mess method, but they, they told them this is going to increase your metabolism. It's going to mm -hmm. make you feel good. They actually lost weight and their metabolism shifted versus the ones that were told nothing. 
So yeah. it's actually interesting that a perspective in terms of our movement, like thinking about gardening is so great because you're moving your body in so many different ways. And then you've got this beautiful outcome exactly. where you've got like these magical, you know, fruits and vegetables in your back. And you're outdoors and you're getting sun, which yeah. is another key. Yeah. D is so important, <laughs> especially if you're, if you're not getting sun or if you live, live somewhere where there isn't sun. So um, tell us, like, give us a success story or two, inspire us with one or two of your clients, midlife women who have knocked it out of the park who have gone from feeling like, you know, no energy, not sleeping well, stressed out, can barely lift a five pound, you know, bag of sugar to yeah. feeling like they're rocking it. Yeah. I have one, um, I have one client that I worked with and she actually just did a program with me, which is a five day, um, is a five day challenge. And, um, it's called a, uh, whole food and home detox program. And um, I know the word detox sounds scary, but we're not doing teas or anything like that. It's basically about ridding your nutrition and your home of those hormone disruptors that we were talking about. So looking at your makeup, looking at your cleaning products, and then also looking at your nutrition to see if there's anything that could be bothering you. Like, you know, um, dairy or eggs or gluten or, you know, just to find out if there's any of those things that are bothering you, just trying to clean it up a little bit, uh, lowering your sugar, getting rid of that alcohol, things like that for five days. Um, and then adding in some movement and just like nine minute, little 12 minute exercises. Um, each day. And of course, adding your gratitude, your meditation, working on the sleep. And so it's a five day program. And uh, we did that with about three of us all together or three clients all together. And everybody had great results. But um, the one person, she said that she pretty much kicked the habit of um, going to her McDonald's because she would do that a lot. So she had decreased that habit of, of, of the McDonald's. And she told me that she had really decreased wanting her sugar every single day. So that was a really big outcome. And she had even lost um, like about a half an inch, she had said, in just that wow. one week. And then um, another client that was in that same group was able to continue that program on her vacation the next week. And she was really excited that she was able to really enjoy her vacation and not gain any weight on the whole vacation because she was able to follow the plan because it was more of a lifestyle thing. It was like we said, we're adding things and taking away, you know, the things that didn't serve you, you were just starving and over exercising. So um, she also had lost some inches. And then she was able to, what I think is more success is that she was able to follow it as a lifestyle, you know, through her vacation. So those were yeah, two I successes. Yeah. But the small changes really do add up. And when we do it from this place of self love, that was a big 180 for me is when I found self compassion helping people to improve their lives and lifestyle from this place of self-love. Mm -hmm. When I was a personal fitness trainer in my forties, it was like, we just all like bashed our bodies. Like how much harder can I work out? How much less can I eat? And we never, we don't, we always thought if I change my body, then I'm going to love my body and myself. And we never got yeah. there because body yeah. image is nothing to do with your body. It's all in your mind. And I love right. that these small yeah. changes, like I had one client give up diet Coke, and like mm -hmm. she was drinking, she was pretty is addicted to Diet Coke and she gave yeah. it up and she felt so much better having water, working yeah. on that sleep. So really awesome, awesome uh, suggestions, really worth their price in gold. So one final question, if you had uh, advice to give your younger self, now that you are a wise midlife woman in your fifties, yes. what would you tell your younger self? I would definitely tell my younger self to stop worrying so much about how I look and my weight and um, to concern myself more with the adding things and more weight training and lifestyle things. And then everything else will fall into place. Yeah, that's beautiful. I know. I, I, when I look back at myself, I sometimes visualize myself going and kind of putting an arm around my younger self and just saying, honey, it's going to be okay. Don't be so hard on yourself. And I think that, you know, so often we, we just focus on this metric of weight because mm -hmm. we've been conditioned and trained to do that. And I think when we can get that off our plate and focus on what we're putting on our, really putting on our plate and in our mouths and on our bodies and treating ourselves, um, you know, as if we are these divine beings, which we are, 
you know, as a soul having a human experience and really appreciating our body as this temple that we're living in makes all the difference in the world. So if you're listening, I hope today has really inspired you to pick up some weights, to get moving, to reach out to Dr. Roslyn. If you really are struggling, you know, with movement, you need some accountability, you need some knowledge and your, your videos on Instagram are so fun. You, you provide so (laughs) much value. Dr. Roslyn has so much great movement and exercise. So check her out. It's Dr. Rosalyn on Instagram and where yes. else can, I'm assuming people can get you at Rekinetic. Is it Rekinetic? Yes. Yeah. Rekineticpt.com okay. is my website. So it's R-E-K-I-N-E-T-I-C-P-T.com is the website. And then also my Facebook group is also um, Dr. Rosalyn. So if you go to Facebook groups, it's just Dr. Rosalyn as well. All right. Well, I'm going to check out your Facebook group because it sounds like <laughs> so much fun. Dr. Rollins is a lot of fun. And I think I've seen you do some dance videos, right? You do a little bit of boogie? Uh, not too much. I think in the past, you know, this pandemic, you did a little boogie stuff. And then I think last week I did do one little. I think I saw you do some of that stuff. (laughs) I did Um, one little one. (laughs) Always always fun. Well, Dr. Roslyn, thank you so much for joining. I know that I have learned a lot and been inspired by our conversation. Thank you all for being here. So I hope that you will go out and get active and move. And uh, if you're struggling with menopausal symptoms, you don't have to struggle in silence. There are lots of things that you can do for movement to what you're eating, your sleep, your stress, and also, you know, finding a physician who will listen to you and considering whether or not medications are a good route for you. Um, As someone who takes HRT, I think it's a really good option for a lot of women. So thank you all so much for being here. We'll catch you on the next episode of Rock Your Midlife. Welcome to the Rock Your Midlife podcast, your transformative sanctuary designed to guide you through self-discovery and provide the tools you need to find your purpose and navigate life authentically. Whether you want to optimize your health, boost your happiness, or deepen your self-love, this podcast is your ultimate toolkit.